What's what's one question that you ask your prospects though to build urgency in the sale? I'm going to put you on the spot. What's one question you ask your prospects to help build urgency in the sale? Well, I say, you know, if you don't make this change now, if you're not willing, you know, if you, if you don't think it's the right time now, when will it, when will it be like, what has to happen in your business to actually get you to a point where this would make sense? If it doesn't make sense now, when we're having this conversation, when would it make sense? And what do they typically say to that? Like, well, every so often you'll get somebody who like wants to, you know, see like, hammer you a little bit and be like, well, you know, when I lose X amount of dollars, right. I'm like, well, what if you didn't have to, like, what if there was a way that you could get what, what without having to put yourself through that pain, yeah. unless you like pain. I mean, some people do, some people don't, but what <laughs> if there was a way that yeah. you could get what you wanted now without having to go down that road? Yeah. So if there, if there was a way you could get what you wanted without having to go through all that pain, is that something that would, would it make sense to at least investigate going down that road now? What do you think psychologically that does in their mind when you ask that question? You know, it makes them own it. It makes them own their problem rather than me trying to solve. I, I never use, I, I just use the word I, but I don't use the word I when I'm talking to a prospect. So if there was a way you could, cause yeah. you can do it. You don't have to use me. Yeah. You could use somebody else. You could, you could do it on your own, whatever it is you want to do. That's totally your decision. But if there was a yeah. way that you could get there, would it be worth having a conversation? And, and 95% of the people are going to open up to that, right? Because they, they're viewing you as like, oh, this person's not here to stuff their solution down their throat. Maybe they have something that really can help me. That's the difference in the way of thinking. Yeah. And I would say, well, I'm not saying that there is, I'm just saying if there were like, I, I don't know yet. Yeah. So it's like, this. so if, if there was a way that you could have, you know, repeat back what they said they wanted, if there was a way that you could have, you know, X and, and Y and Z with your space. And I'm not saying that, that you could yet, but let's pretend that you could, you know, X and Y and Z it, is, is that something that would be appropriate to have a conversation around? You know, and people are not 100 percent right. Yeah, no, nobody's gonna say no. yeah, nobody's going to say no. No. And, and you're talking I mean, you're selling to very sophisticated buyers, right? You're not you're not selling to Joe Mo out on the street, right? You're you're selling to people that have got some, you know, some money to invest and, and those type of things are a little bit more cautious. They're more skeptical. They're more sophisticated. So you have to have the right sales skills. You have to know the right questions to ask at the right time to get them to start persuading themselves they want to make that change themselves because everybody wants to feel smart so if all of a sudden you make that coo look good to his ceo because or the controller because he made a good decision and he owns it then all of a sudden he wants to go brag to all of his other controller friends and c-level friends about this great decision he made hey call chuck because man he made me look good or I got a guy who can do it. Everybody has a guy, right? Everybody likes to say, yeah, I got a guy. Sure. And that's kind of what happens. You're the guy. You've become a trusted authority. How has it helped you in other parts of your life, though? I know you were messaging me one time about you're using it on Capitol Hill or something. I'm like, what? Yeah, you know, I do a lot of uh, healthcare reform meetings in, uh, in D.C., or at least I used to. <laughs> wow. And I can't do it anymore. But um and I'm pretty actively on the political side of things, which you probably have, have noticed. Um, sure. And I will tell you that, you know, that's all politicians. Like it helps it, dealing with politicians because they want to feel smart. They want to feel like they're the ones who they own the answer, even though you're the one who helped them get there. And all right. of a sudden they'll call me. Now I get calls every now and again from different legislators around California and Texas where they're like, hey, I had a constituent was having this issue and this, that, and the other, and can you maybe guide me in how to respond? So now you sort of teach them on how to sell to their constituents so that they can get reelected too. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what politics is, right? You're, you know, you're, you're trying to persuade and influence and convince others to vote for you. So you're really in the business of moving others. That's part of persuasion, right? hundred percent. Right. 
All right. So, Hey, I love this interview. I didn't want to take more than 20, 30 minutes of your time. What's, what's your advice for everybody living today? You know, just give in. You have to just let it go and try, try. It's hard for some of us is abandon what you thought you knew or what you thought worked or what didn't work. You just have to give into the process. Yeah. Just give into the process. And what's the worst that can happen? Like you're going to fail. Sometimes we all fail and you're going to learn so much from that failure. You'll learn way more from the failure than you ever will from the success. Sure. You know? Yeah. That's all. I just, commit. Yeah. You got to commit to, to, to learning, you know, the right questions to ask. You got to commit to MBQ. You got to learn situation questions and your problem awareness and solution awareness and your consequence questions and your transitioning and how to commit. You learn the whole program, not bits and pieces. You learn bits and pieces. Well, you get what type of results bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. Results. Right. <laughs> Any last words for our listeners here? I, I think this is a good interview. I love, I love these short and quick, you know, 20, 30 yeah. interviews. I mean, you guys, number one, Jeremy is one of the most generous, like gurus that I've ever come in contact. He's approachable. You know, you can ask him questions. He's very generous with his time. He's got, you know, a nice family and he, he takes care of us and we are all reaping the benefits of it. And we just need to keep going as a community and help him grow too. I mean, it's a two way street. No, no, you're good. You're good. We've, uh, we turn away a lot of people that join this group because we're only looking for like specific people in this group. So I love it. So, um, Chuck, thanks for being on and, uh, look forward to, uh, have you out here again, man. I, and I, and I love those, uh, I love those testimonies. You're going to post about your, you need to post in your, in the group, about your pool that was just built from, from all the commissions you're making now from the sales training. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, I, I do. I, I go, Hey, how'd you build that pool? Oh, that was Jeremy Minor helped me build that. I made a picture of that a while back on, on my uh, private Facebook. You know, <laughs> hey, thanks for the pool, man. I thought that was awesome, dude. All right. Love it. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're gonna help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.